Hello everyone, hope you're all well and thanks very much for all the support with my videos, so likes, shares and comments, I'm very very grateful. Today I'm going to speak about Irish neutrality and we've seen a huge huge erosion of our neutrality over the last past number of years and in particular it's been ramped up since the war in Ukraine in the context of the European Peace Facility and Irish armies being involved in weapons training for Armed Forces Ukraine and also the drive towards the uh, European Army because of the uh, pose and threat, according to the mainstream media, of the imminent invasion of the Russian Federation across Europe. <laughs> Make of that what you will. But I think well, what's important to note in the whole conversation around neutrality is what the Irish government have always tried to erode our neutrality. We've seen that for over 20 years with the use of Shannon Airport as a military air base by the United States. We've also seen it with the PESCO deals, that's a permanent structured uh, cooperation deals in terms of move towards the European army. We've seen that with the European defense uh, project also as well. And uh, as I said, the European peace facility, which has been raided now for arms because of the European High Commissioner, Joseph Burrell and his push for war and not to mention NATO as well. But in Ireland, it's very interesting because Sean Clancy, who is the Chief of Staff of the Irish Defence Forces has now applied for the position of the Chair of the EU Military Committee. Now this is important because we can see a huge erosion of Irish neutrality and this is another step towards eroding our neutrality forger and drawing us into a, a deeper military alliance across the European Union. Now they have to appoint him as a four-star general. Currently there's no four-star generals in Ireland and to be able to be put forward for this position, he has to be a four-star general. So they're making special conditions available to make him a four-star general to go for this role, which is going to come up, I think, next year. And it's also important to note that uh, Michael Collins, I think, was the last four-star general. Richard Mulcahy, probably, perhaps, in the early 1920s as well, who actually lived for a time, actually not far away, in Rat Mines. And, as I said, it's Brussels' highest military body in the European Union. And the, uh, the offices, as I said, would be in Brussels and Belgium. Interestingly enough, where the European Commission offices are and where the head of NATO is as well. Aiden NATO offices in Brussels as well. Interestingly enough. It's not very coincidental. So uh, we see all this drive towards militarism and uh, we can see the move, as I've said, towards uh, pushing the Irish troops forward in these uh, missions across Europe. And as I've said, this has been a long-standing aim of the European project that I've had serious reservations about because we've seen the neoliberalism and the destruction of a lot of our public and social services around Europe and the privatisation agenda as well. And this is a deeper erosion and attack on ordinary people across the continent of Europe and in particular here in Ireland because since 20, uh, 2000, they were trying to ramp up the military industrial complex across Europe as well, uh, with the Western European Union military alliance. And then in 2009, we saw the mutual defence clause, which Ireland has uh, objections to, which was part of the Lisbon Treaty that Ireland were forced to vote on twice. But again, this was a deeper ties militarily. And even the European uh, president spoke in 2015 about a European army. And Germany supported the European President's demands, European Union's President's demands um, in, or Commission, sorry, President's demands in 2016 around the drive towards the European Army. And the legislation was passed for PESCO, which I said is a work towards deeper battle groups and permanent uh, structure cooperation between, and there's a military alliance in the European Union, was brought into being in 2017. And now we've seen the European Peace uh, Facility under the European Defence Fund used for a war in Ukraine in terms of 13 billion euro has been used for that and in 2022 they were pushing this rapid deployment capacity as well. Now uh, this is part of what's been going on in Europe and Simon Harris when he was in Europe last week at his first ministerial and president or leaders meeting <laughs> Simon Harris himself uh, attended and uh, he spoke about uh, the accession talks for Ukraine, 
you also spoke about European security and all this, the threats of disinformation, misinformation that Michal Martin likes talking about all the time. And we have our famous commission, Naman, here in Ireland, the uh, Troop Ministry. And he spoke about cyberspace security as well. Now this is to try to ramp up the threat, uh, the impending threat of, uh, who's the enemy? Russia. And this is what they're trying to stoke up again towards building us towards a military union. And this hasn't been a new tin with Fine Gael because back in 2003, Gay Mitchell, who uh, was one of the guys with Fine Gael, who actually ran for president of Ireland as well, was one of the main uh, pushers to get us towards more of a military union. And uh, wanted it, and uh, said Irish military uh, neutrality is something of the past. Uh, well, an active and a, a very strong point of view we should be working for in terms of neutrality is working on a basis of diplomacy. It's in our Irish constitution where we seek, so seek specific settlements to international disputes. But we can see with the fallout of the proxy war in Ukraine, the impacts here in Ireland in the context of the immigration disaster. We've seen over 120,000 Ukrainians come here that's increased our population by 2%, not to mention that I spoke about the, uh, the pending EU migration pact as well. And uh, von der Leyen spoke about a single market for defence as well. Von der Leyen, who herself has been investigated again for her contracts with Pfizer and uh, military industrial complex as well, interestingly enough. But I wonder how far those investigations go. And all the party po politicians, uh, the vast majority of them in Ireland, are uh, extolling the virtues of Ursula von der Leyen by dragging us into a pending conflict with uh, the Russian Federation. And uh, this is important to note because in the past number of days in the US they voted to get their uh, more money sent to Ukraine and the uh, Congress were waving Ukrainian flags. Isn't this ironic? A country of uh, freedom and democracy is speaking about uh, <laughs> Ukrainian flags uh, propping up Zelensky's regime as well. Not to mention the amount of money that our, the Irish government are sending across to Ukraine as well. Not to mention the, the weapons training and all the migration issues as well. Um, and it's our public money as well. And uh, Michael McGrath said a few months ago, who was our Minister for Public Expenditure, he spoke and said that we would have to give more money into the European Union budget to get the same level of social services. Well, the social services, as we know, and public services in Ireland are at breaking points with hospital waiting lists, with people in housing, the housing, homeless disaster, uh, and many, many basic issues people are facing. But again, these boys are more interested in sidling up to the uh, super rich in Brussels than we're interested with the people of Ireland. And also in the context of uh, Macron's comments over the last number of months about getting troops on the ground. And this has been a big push from uh, the European Union to try and get troops on the ground in Ukraine, all about pushing the US hegemony and this so-called free market ideology that they're always trying to push uh, to get the resources and these sort of issues as well. Uh, and to push their emphasis on freedom and democracy when it's actually anything but freedom and democracy when you know, in fact, when countries like Ukraine have banned political opposition, banned elections as well, and uh, banned uh, church, banned media as well, and jail journalists. So uh, this is a so-called freedom of democracy that all of our money here in Ireland is going towards. And at the same time, they're trying to create this threat to drive Ireland towards more of a militarist union with the European Union. We should be opposed by anybody who's interested in peace, anybody who's interested in challenging the ruling elites push towards more war. We should be standing up for peace, standing up for diplomacy. Ireland as a colonised country should know greater than most in terms of what we've uh, stood up for in the, in the past. And ordinary people have stood up for our rights in terms of standing up for our independence and standing up for our sovereignty. And it's crucially important now more than ever that people put these together because the Irish government currently are trying to erode our triple lock, which means that they can now try and send them, try and legislate for it to send more than 12 members of um, our defence forces off to foreign missions and perhaps, who knows, into Ukraine. Uh, speaking about Macron and getting boots on the ground in Ukraine, which would lead into a wider conflict uh, with the Russia Federation, which is absolute lunacy. Uh, not to mention the fallout from that in terms of the migration fallout and the huge loss of life. Over 600,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed as well and well over a million have been maimed because of that uh, brutal war that's taken place as well. Uh, rather than stand up for peace, rather than looking back to the Minsk agreements, and uh, could have been avoided. But again, Ireland are still f following along 
with the ruling classes narrative all the time rather than pushing for peace. So it's very important that all these issues are connected and how they're impacting us and impacting ordinary working class people that will be sent off to fight and die in these wars uh, for the interests of uh, the big global corporations and the big multinationals, not the interests of ordinary people. So thanks again for joining me in my video today and uh, thanks for all the support. Please press like to my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel and thanks to people who support me through buying me a coffee as well. I'm very grateful. So from Dublin today, thanks for all the support and take care. See you all too soon. Salon, bye bye.